Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So today I'm going to tackle the second mission inspiration set of prompts for October. So the first set was Halloween themed but I did a second set for those people that don't like to do Halloween and um, for whatever reason. So this is the set of non-Halloween prompts for October. So part two. The eight steps are the same. I didn't change those because you could use those for whatever but what I did do is I changed the colours and the words for inspiration. So when I printed this out, um, <coughs> the turquoise seemed to have printed really really dark for some strange reason. Um, so obviously it's a dark colour, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use a dark turquoise, you can use whatever turquoise shade you have in whatever format, whether it's paint, gelatos, neo colours, um, inks, you name it, you can choose whatever shade of turquoise because there are lots and lots of different ones out there depending on what medium you want to use, whether it's a pastel or a wax or anything like that. And the coral colour um, I was so sure I had more than one different type of coral colour when I set these prompts originally but when I actually went and searched for a coral colour I could only find one which was the abandoned coral in Distress Ink but I don't want to use that because it's not permanent when it's dry. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to use some neo colours for a change to build up my background. I don't have a coral colour, I've got a turquoise, I haven't got a pair I've only got a few greens and I can't find a pear colour amongst all those. I've got a dark, I've got a, a light olive which is almost the same which is that one there. I've got a turquoise, blue turquoise which is obviously lighter and then to make up the coral colour I've got the um, vermilion and I've got an orange. So if I kind of mix those two together, red and orange together, it's going to give me a kind of colorly colour in the background. So the first step for October is to apply washes of colour or gesso. Now let me just put that to one side. I've already pre-gessoed my page. I've done it with white gesso rather than clear gesso this time. Um, and I did it before I started filming because it, nobody got time to watch white paint dry. It's probably the most boring thing on earth. So what I've done is I've pre-gessoed it and dried it, which is why my paper on my cardstock has curled slightly because it's not 100% dry. It still feels a little bit damp. Um, I've got a sheet 8 inches by 8 inches of watercolour cardstock. On one side I've got a kind of um, like a linen pattern or linen texture but I'm using the smooth side today because I know I want to add these neo colours onto the background. Um, and it's about 140 pound or 300 GSM in weight. So just standard kind of watercolour cardstock. So as I said, I've already pre-gessoed on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, my neo colours and I'm just going to randomly rub all the way over. just to add a little bit of that colour into the background. And to activate, I'm just going to use a wet wipe. So just to make sure that it is wet all the way through, because this one's been poking out of the top, so it's a little bit dry in areas. So it's just damp, it's not wringing wet. And I'm just going to activate that colour into the background. I'm just going to wash it all the way over. That kind of real nice, subtly, a subtle effect in the background, almost like a watercolour wash. Now of course the thing with neo colours is that when dry they are permanent. So I'm going to get that blue dry and then I'll be right back. The turquoise blue is dry. Now if you want to build up the colour to make it deeper then you can just go over it again if you want to just to make it darker in places. I'm just going to give it a quick once over. I'm going to use the same baby wipe and just rub 
left and right motions and then up and down just to kind of activate it and then it, it will just increase the depth or the colour depth a little bit more and you can increase this and do it as many times as you want to until you're happy you've got that right depth in the background. I'll just quickly give that a blast and then I'll be back again as soon as I've done that. Okay, so my blue is dry, so I can put that back with all the rest of my Neo colours. And then I'm going to take the, um, what colour did we say? Light olive. And I'm just going to give that a rub in different areas. Not a huge amount. And then again, I'm just going to take a clean baby wipe and I'm just going to activate that. So I get a nice kind of mottled background. Different shades. Just to activate the Neo colour. Of it off the page. Put that right down to the corner over there. Okay, get that dry. Okay, so that green has now kind of settled down in the background and is dry enough for me to work on. So I'm going to move on to step number two. I know I haven't added any of the coral colour just yet, but that's going to come later. So number step two is to stamp all over your page. So let's move on to that one. So for that, I've got um, a script stamp from Indigo Blue. Um, it's a, quite an old one. And I've got some tree branch archival ink and I'm just going to, just so I know which way the text is supposed to go, I'm just going to literally just grab some of the ink and then just randomly just stamp into the background. It's illegible text anyway so it doesn't really make any difference whether it's upside down or not but it just helps get into that kind of creative mode if you know exactly which way around it's supposed to be going. Just randomly lighter in some areas, darker in others. So that's the script stem. So I'm going to put that to one side now. Then I want to add a little bit more stamping. This time I'm going to use the Artist Tools stamp. So we've got one that's got pencils in there and it also says art is opening your soul to letting your imagination fly out um, and then it says let your heart sing. So we've got a couple of those. I'm going to use the pencil one and again I'm not going to use um, a block or anything like that. I'm just going to ink it up and I'm just going to add it lightly like so. onto the page. I'm not pushing down really really hard. I just want to add in some of that detail just around the page. And I ain't bothered whether it's upside down or not at this stage. I just want to get those pencils and kind of things in the middle. So I've just created a kind of little border coming in up from all four directions because my focal point is going to go about here so I wanted that in the background. So that is step number two. So step number three, it says bringing the sheet back in, is to make marks with your fingers or found items. Okay so I've still got the white gesso so I'm going to dip into my mark making drawer um, and I can't decide whether to use 
some bubble wrap. Yeah, I think we'll use bubble wrap. It's a really good scan bag. I don't think <laughs> I don't think I overuse it. Um, let me just see if I've got that should do about that size. I'll just cut that in half. He says, what did he do with his scissors? There they are. Staring me in the face. Okay, not every layer has to be um, has to be really like in your face. You can add layers that are really quite subtle. So I'm just using some white gesso here. I'm just going to paint the bubble wrap and then I'm just going to add it like at the bottom and when it dries it will just help break up and diffuse those edges just softens them I'm not worried about getting paint on this old craft mat to be honest I forgot it was actually there whoops never mind So just give, I'm even taking paint just from the lid of the gesso, I'm actually dipping my brush into the pot itself. Drop some of that in the middle. And you, you could use anything you want. You could just use it around the edges of it with your fingers. You could just grab anything to create that effect. Just something just to break up the background and because you're stamping on top or, or you're putting your marks on top of the existing layers it will help just bring that background into the foreground just help to give your page you know a, a little bit of um, consistency all the way through so that's all I'm going to do for that that will do for step number three I'll put that bubble wrap to one side I don't tend to reuse my bubble wrap once I've done that I normally throw it away because I've got loads of it I'm just going to give that a quick blast to get it all dry and then you'll see how it kind of starts to disappear into the background because I've used gesso you do get a bit of a subtle effect okay so the gesso is now dry and you can see that it has kind of died back a little bit. It's not kind of as wow as it was. And from a distance it actually looks like an old map. You see land masses and you've got the lines in the background of the map and that kind of thing. <laughs> totally, unint or totally unintentional. Now has that just gone out of focus? I thought I had manual focus on there. Well, the last thing we want is for it to uh, is to start going funny. Right, let me just sort that out and I'll be right back. Okay, I think that's sorted the focus out. My washing machine downstairs also went onto full spin, so I ended up vibrating the wall, so I had to stop for a little while. <laughs> yeah, domestic bliss. Anyway, let's put that to one side now and bring this back in. So for step number four, we've got add a focal image or two, and then for step number five, drag or scrape paint onto your page. I'm gonna switch those two round. So I'm going to drag and scrape a little bit of paint onto the page before I add my focal point. Um, you're allowed, these are for inspiration only, so if you're inspired, go right ahead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my Vermilion Neo Colour, a little bit of orange, and I've got my little paintbrush, and I'm just going to get a little bit of water I'm just going to activate them onto this little polypropylene mat. And if I don't think I've got enough red in there, so a little bit of red and orange to make that coral colour, I'll just mix in a little bit more of the red if I don't think it's red enough. So just keep on going until I think I've got enough red in there. That's pretty much still kind of orangey. I wonder if a darker red will probably be better. What was that one? Carmine. So let's see 
whether that helps with the colour. Ah, now then, that's a little bit better as far as colour is concerned. So I want to drag and scrape a little bit of colour into the background. So I'm going to grab that with my spatula. I'm just going to pick it up and then I don't want it to look like drips of blood, which we have the danger of it doing. I might have to take remedial action and scrape that across the page. Too much there. Okay. That'll do for that. Now there is a little bit too much there so what I'm going to do just to kind of remedy that is just wash my brush out quickly and just dry it on some kitchen roll and bring back that bubble wrap. I haven't thrown it away just yet. So what I'm going to do just to help break that up because I don't like the fact that there's all those on there. So I'm just going to go back over that just to help disguise it a bit. What just fell on the floor? I heard something go. Can't see anything. Ah, that's what it was. The lid to my water bottle. So just to add a little bit more of that gesso on there, just to kind of break it up. If you ever think that you've added too much on, you can always use this little tactic just to um, just to disguise where you think that you've gone a bit too heavy. Um, Obviously you don't just use white, you can use whatever colour you want to, but what I tend to do is I will pick one of the colours from the background and then go back over the top again and that helps to break it up and disguise the fact that you've gone a little bit too heavy in some places. That's fine. So we've added the coral colour now, I can put my new colours away. So that's all three colours we've dealt with. So we've dealt with the green pear, the coral and with the turquoise in the background. Plus we've got that stamping which is really really cool. So let me just get that dry and then I'll be right back. Okay so we said we were going to swap those two around and we four and five. So I've dragged and scraped paint onto the page so now it's time to add a focal image or two. Okay so my focal images or my focal image um, I've been spending on my friend Kersey's, my new friend Kersey's um, Etsy store again and I'll just put on screen here the set of digi images that um, I used for these. Now I did end up adding my own wings to the back, they didn't, in, they didn't come in the kit that you can see there. Um, and this is the Whimsical Women Paper Dolls digital collage sheet and there's, there's quite a few pieces that you can get. There are wings in the kit um, that she sells but I added my own because I liked mine better uh, and I tinted them to go with the colours. So, but everything else I got from that kit. So put them all together in my Adobe Photoshop and then printed as normal and then cut it out. So all I have to do now is just to add my glue to the back of my image. I'm just using the um, diary glue stick. You could use any type of glue stick that you want. Other brands are available in no particular order. 
your home is at risk if you don't keep up repayments and contents may settle in transit and all other kind of disclaimers. Okay, so let's turn that round. <clears throat> and I'm going to just add my little character down there at the bottom. I'm not going to stick, um, I'm not going to push it down too hard just yet because I want to add my slogan into the background before. So I've got escape into your imagination, which is one of the words there, words of inspiration. Let's grab that. I think I need to go back to uh, from the heart to get some more of these. I'm almost out. I think that's my last one. I'll buy these in batches of two or three. And just tuck that underneath her hat. Just like that. Just see if I can try and keep it straight-ish. <laughs> Doesn't have to be perfectly straight, but straight-ish does help. I love these images. They're so versatile. And the fact that you can add, you know, all the heads are separate, so you can add the different heads onto the different bodies are just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, so let's just quickly run through what we've done so far. So wash, stamped, made marks with bubble wrap, added our focal image or two, dragged and scraped paint all over the page. Yes, so glue fabric fragments. Okay, now I had a look to see if I had any fabric that I could possibly use that I would think would go with this. I couldn't find anything at all. And as I was searching for something to use, I found a napkin in my stash. This one. With all the roses. But I liked this black and white kind of board. I've already removed all of the ply from the napkin. It was a three ply, -ply napkin. So I've removed two of the plies um, and disposed of those because I don't think I'll ever going to use them. And I've kept this bit, but what I've done is I've actually cut that off from the bottom bit. And then I've cut the, that striped piece from the bottom of that napkin into four other strips, as you can see here. And what I'm going to attempt to do is grab my brush and a little bit of that medium I'm going to attempt to create a border all the way around the page using these strips. I know. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. So let's add some matte medium onto this. This is going to be a bit tricky because A, it could tear and um, because tissue napkins are not very strong when you've separated the plies. Not very strong at all. So what I'm going to do is just going to go all the way along the page. It is matte medium, so it's not going to affect the neo colours underneath or the archival ink because they're all permanent when dry. I'm just going to try and catch it across the top and then just brush on the glue. It is quite delicate. It is quite delicate, so I'm going to do the bottom bit first. Try and do it so our feet don't tuck under. And I probably will have to trim. Which is going to be fun. Love it when it's fiddly. All right, let's use that straight edge there. Just push it down gently with the fingers, grab the matte medium, and then just go over it again. This is why having a napkin collection is really useful because sometimes you can use them for things that you just wouldn't expect, particularly if you cut them up 
and use them collage style. Okay, so while that's still a little bit wet, I'm just going to see that one's fallen off that side already. I'm just going to snip them off. There we go. Now I've got that overhang bit at the bottom there, but that's fine. That's not going to get in the way for what I need to do next. And then what I'm going to do is just turn it round and then repeat the process on the other two sides. So just add some glue along the edge. Just add that matte medium really, really gently. And then just stick it down. Just gently push, just so the matte medium grabs the tissue. And then just with the brush, just lightly go over it, just to seal it in. Not putting a lot of pressure on it at all. I'm just literally going over it with light strokes just to make sure that the matte medium soaks through the tissue and again do the same at this side the final piece I tell we've got a straight edge there no never mind We've got a bit showing. Gently a bit of a kink on there. A little bit kinky. A bit of a wobble. Not kinky that way. I know what you're thinking. Okay. Just one more little dab in that medium and that should dropsy. Clumsy fingers. I think that should do us. Just trim the excess off there and then Because it's wet it probably will just rip off anyway. Okay. Ooh, I've missed some. Could I miss that? Blind old bugger. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna get that dry and then I will be right back. Okay, so the matte medium has pretty much dried all the way around the edges of the page. So I just need to trim off this excess. So I'm going to go off and just trim all this down very, very carefully. But because this is a bit of a boring thing to watch, you've seen me start it. So I shall just jump right to the end where I'm all done. Okay, so I've trimmed off the excess all the way around. I'm going to take that one off, cheated slightly, but hey ho, never mind. So, step six stitch, sew, or staple. Well, okay, seeing as we're cheating, I'm not very good at any of those. I don't particularly want to do staples because I did that last time. So, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do some faux stitching just all the way around the inside of that border. It shouldn't take too long just to do a little bit of doodling. If you want to you can just double track yourself. little bit of doodles goes a long way. 
We like a good doodle every now and again. And you can be as intricate or as careful as you want to. <clears throat> you know, if you've got stencils or anything like that, that do stitching, fine. I'm also going to add some just on the inside of this too, just to kind of bring that doodle into the fore. There we go. Just helps to bring it all together. So step number seven, stitch, sew or, stitch, sew or staple. It doesn't say that you have to use real stitches or real sewing. That's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so the final step then, he says, step number eight is to add metallic accents or highlights. Okay, so for that, I'm going to do a bit more stamping. So I've got this little stamp here, Indigo Blue Dinky. It's called English Flourish. Yes, English Flourish. Do I need a block? I think so. Let me just try and put a little block that's going to help me with that. That will do. Okay, and it says metallic. So I've got some Encore Ultimate Metallic Gold Ink. And this is from, uh, I think it's Sukuniko. Yes, it is. And it does stay wet for a long, long time. So I've got in these metallics, gold, silver, copper, and bronze. And these are beautiful beautiful um, metallic inks. Now because we've now got the stamp platform I'd actually prefer to use these or use this ink rather than embossing powder just because. You can get some really nice kind of shiny gold effects. So I'm going to just ink that up again. Make sure I've got plenty on. I'm going to stamp into the corners there. Look at the shine. It's lovely. That bling 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 bling, and then final one. I'm going to add another one up here into that corner. If you're wondering what this ink blending foam is doing stuck there, it's just kind of a piece of velcro so that I know I've always got one handy. And then I'm just going to stamp that on right in there. That's it. And then once again you've got that shine, I don't know if you can see it up in the corner. There, just there. Very, very subtle gold effect into that background. I love it. I think it's cool. Okay, let me put that to one side, put the gold away, because so I normally end up sticking my fingers in it and getting gold ink everywhere. So let's have a look. What have we got? We've done. So green, coral, subtle in the background, 
turquoise and then we've applied wash of colour, stamped all over the page, made max with fingers or found items, bubble wrap. We switched over, dragged the paint onto the page, didn't like it so we then went, went back with the bubble wrap then added our focal image, glued fabric fragments, well we did tissue around the outside which is near enough, stitch so our staple, we did the faux, stitch in and added metallic accents or highlights and we've used the word escape. So I would say mission accomplished for part two for October. If you enjoyed that please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already then you're missing out. And don't forget if you have subscribed but you haven't clicked that bell icon you need to do that because otherwise you won't get notified every time I upload a new video. YouTube rules, not mine. Don't shoot the messenger. So that's all from me. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.